Hey, what's going on there folks? Earthmaster here checking in on this April 1st, 2020, 9.46 p.m. No April Fool's joke uh, today, that is, or <laughs> for, uh, for most of us, I would think. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and do a quick update video on the uh, activity in Idaho first. Quite a bit of aftershock activity occurring in the great state of Idaho up there in the Intermountain West region. You can see quite a, uh, quite a bit of aftershock activity. This globe does not show at all because it is on the 24 hour uh, window. So we've lost the main quake, the 6.5, and also quite a few quakes that happened after it. Uh, now over 24 hours, yeah, 24 hours old. So uh, we'll switch over to the USGS map on a flat scale and we can see a little bit better detail here. This is just the last seven days, uh, which does include the activity yesterday and today uh, from the USGS 2.5 and above. There are earthquakes that are happening that are lower than 2.5. So this 80, well, let's zoom in here a little bit so we can get a more accurate detail with what these folks are saying. These 74 earthquakes here are a very minimal number when it comes to the uh, actual amount of earthquakes that are taking place up there in Idaho right now. This number is probably much higher and there's no doubt there's earthquakes out there taking place that uh, have not been accounted for and uh, if you've been watching the live stream you can see that on the live data coming in from the um, Idaho station that, uh, that I have pulled up there, Haley, Idaho I believe it is, um, showing earthquakes happening maybe every two minutes or so not big ones but they're definitely earthquakes so at least on this map folks uh seven days 2.5 and above 74 earthquakes the big earthquake the 6.5 that struck there um well northeast of boise idaho roughly about 70 miles northeast of boise and uh well there's haley down there check out haley so i may i may have to readjust my data stations here because Haley, the data station that I'm using, is in itself almost 70 miles away from the epicenter, so it's still showing activity. Uh, let me show you guys real quick what I'm talking about here, and then we'll go into a little bit further detail. That's going to be uh, the station that's coming up on the bottom left side of the screen here. Uh, missing Mendocino again in California, keeps going off the air, but this station right here, Haley, Idaho. See all these little spikes right here? There's a pretty good sized spike there. These are all earthquakes, folks. So, um, And there's a bigger one that just came in, too, that kind of flatlined the rest of them. So I'm going to see if I can get a closer station there so we can watch this a little bit better. That's about 60 miles away, and it's still showing uh, up rather nicely on this data station. But uh, I need to move in a little bit closer there. But there's, there's quite a bit of earthquake activity that's taking place roughly uh, every couple minutes or so. Um, getting back to the um, activity here, you can see it's um, pretty much centered within one area, within one location here. And that's uh, normal, right, for a fault system. I don't think it's going to spread out anywhere. It is pretty close to the Sawtooth Fault System, which is uh, a pretty good sized fault. You can see the Sawtooth Fault System right there right at the north end of it. Now this system right here is very capable of producing a major earthquake. Uh, 7.5 I believe. Let's go ahead and check out what I pulled out from Wikipedia here real quick. We can get a little bit better information on it. Sawtooth fault system right here uh, is an east dipping normal fault so they claim. The, the professionals they do. One second here. I'm trying to grab this and make it a little bit smaller. Um, uh, vertical motion, which runs along the eastern base of the Sawtooth Mountains in the state of Idaho in the United States. In 2010, Glenn, what's his name, and his colleagues from Idaho State University discovered the Sawtooth Fault near the base of the mountains using LIDAR. They found that it could produce an earthquake measuring up to 7.5 and that two past large earthquakes likely took place on the fault around seven and four thousand years ago folks that's a long time ago 
The fault is 40 miles long, 64 kilometers long, and runs near Stanley, Idaho and Redfish Lake. Future earthquakes could be felt as far as Boise. Uh, and then, of course, it goes to mention about uh, on March 31st, 2020, a 6.5 magnitude quake struck on uh, about 16 kilometers north-northeast of the Sawtooth Fault. However, this quake is likely not on the Sawtooth Fault as it had strike-slip motion rather than up-down motion of a normal fault. But still, pretty close vicinity. We're talking 16 kilometers, right? That's only a few miles away from the uh, that fault system, the Sawtooth Fault, and they're claiming uh, that it's definitely not related. So, we'll take their word for it, right? Getting back to the earthquakes over here at uh, at play here, you can see the migration, and it's not a huge migration, but it's pretty gosh darn close, folks, to the uh, Sawtooth Fault system. I think if anything, right now it has advanced to that area. You know, okay, so we'll just give them the benefit of the doubt. 6.5 was up here, like they mentioned, 16 kilometers north of the Sawtooth Sawtooth Fault system that sits right there on the screen. But, take a look at the swath of activity out here that's shooting down to the south and west. This is no doubt uh, within the vicinity of the Sawtooth Fault now. So, does that mean there's a major earthquake coming? I, it's hard to claim. It's hard to say. Seven to, four to 7,000 years ago is a long time. So, these folks think uh, to have had a large earthquake in this area. So... Um, anything's possible, folks. Anything is very possible when it comes to uh, um, seeing larger quakes on a uh, on a system that uh, hasn't seen any major quakes in quite some time. So it's just uh, it's something to watch. It's something to be prepared out there about. Um, no doubt, it's interesting activity. I think it is uh, to see uh, a big quake like this in the state of Idaho. I want to show you guys the Yellowstone thumbnails here real quick. Once again, let me refresh this so we can get the latest page. The 6.5 is now scooted off of the screen here. But take a look at these graphs here. You would think that there is an earthquake swarm in Yellowstone National Park. For those of you folks that do follow earthquake swarms up there, this is somewhat what they look like. Scattered earthquakes all throughout the park showing up on numerous stations here uh, but these are not localized earthquakes these are all earthquake signatures being picked up um, from the earthquake activity in idaho which sits over here to the west a good distance but no doubt they're showing up and most of these take takes roughly about a oh i don't know 3.5 to 4.0 to show up and of course anything bigger than that in idaho is definitely going to show up uh, the 6.5 blew a lot of these uh, data stations off the charts here and they didn't come back online when it did it so uh, they had to go in and, and refix the data I guess or reset it but it's uh, it's definitely interesting to look at here just seeing all the earthquakes showing up in Yellowstone National Park and these are distant earthquakes not Yellowstone uh, earthquakes no, no localized earthquakes I should say so yeah it's um it's 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 very very interesting folks um you know it's just good to be prepared up there there is like i said a pretty good amount of activity that we're watching in idaho and uh there's quite a few threes quite a few fours let's go back to the and, and those that are coming on the screen right now it's hard to say the magnitude because this station is about 60 70 miles away those those could be magnitude three or greater showing up there um let me see what the largest aftershock sequence that they've had right now uh, up there in idaho let's switch over to last um, 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 um. Well, we're at 2.5 and above, so that should be good. Let's see here. See what I can find the largest one at. No, let's go to 4.5 and above. Well, it only shows the 4.6 as the largest aftershock, but I'm sure there's quite a few that came 
pretty gosh darn close. There's a lot of twos, a lot of upper threes. There's a couple fours, a low 4.1 right there. Um, upper threes, like I said, a whole lot of earthquake activity. 4.4. And uh, yeah, so, so as of right now, the largest aftershock following that 6.5 is a 4.6 that struck uh, shortly just after the main shaker. Let's see where that one's at. And that one's way down south, more towards the sawtooth uh, fault system there. So who knows? This 6.5 may have triggered and woken up a monster that hasn't been woken up in four to 7,000 years, you know, according to the, uh, the big folks there, the professional high dollar paid uh, seismologist. It's something to watch, folks. Especially if you're up there in Idaho. I mean, luckily this was out here in a mountain range, a mountainous area, 70 miles away from any heavy population, populated area. Uh, but it was definitely felt throughout the area up to the north uh, into parts of Washington, down south into Utah, um, Wyoming, I'm sure. It was felt uh, over a considerable distance there. But uh, like I mentioned, luckily uh, low populated areas. Uh, let's do a quick check around the globe here real quick. Check out other areas of activity. Puerto Rico there. Seeing a swarm of activity that they've been seeing for the past couple months. Uh, and that's ongoing. No uptick in that. Just kind of staying steady with a couple threes and lots of twos. Um, no major quakes out here in the Pacific, folks. Looking relatively quiet out here around Japan and, and the Philippines Island region. Just eerily quiet, I must say. Uh, the hot spot right now out here uh, in Idaho. It's uh, something to watch, and we will continue to monitor it. I will, after I do this update video, uh, see if I can't get a little bit closer station there to the uh, to the epicenter area, because, like I said, Haley is about 60 miles away from the uh, epicenter activity and uh, they're still showing up pretty good though I'd like to get those little ones popping up a little bit closer so that's what I'm gonna work on uh, as I'm getting this video uploaded to the uh, YouTube channel so once again folks please uh, subscribe like the channel or subscribe to the channel like the video um, if you do like earthquakes updates and uh, factual information out here we provide it uh, no fake media no fear mongering no uh, oh my gosh, there's going to be an earthquake at midnight or one minute after midnight tonight. We don't do earthquake prediction. It's not possible. Um, it's good to look at areas of high interest, like what's going on now in Idaho, and especially with it being very close to a fault system that hasn't shown any major activity in four to 7,000 years. Yes, that's something to watch. Um, but I'm not saying anything big is going to happen, but it's you know it's really right on top of that fault system now so it's something to watch and be prepared for uh, please stay safe out there folks we'll chat you guys a little bit later have a good evening